Hey everybody, welcome back to the Sky Lounge, and this is Cruise Peruse, episode number 35. Okay, I'm in the east side of town right now, and there's a bunch of fucking bums out here. Fucking hate it. I absolutely hate it. Kids, you already know my feelings about the homeless and bums. Trust me when I say this, I don't like them. Have some sympathy, son. You don't know what their situation is. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck, dude. All right? Sympathy only gets you so fucking far. Like, I I don't know how many times I have to say this shit. Sympathy only gets you so fucking far. Right? Such as the way of life. Such as the way of sports. Sports is all about the meritocracy. All right? It's all about... Can you do your fucking job? Can you get shit done in the toughest of time and you know it's all it's based on how well you do your job right and it's brutal you know if you're a fan of any sports teams you you have to understand that the the world of sports is brutal it's all about recency bias um just not contextualizing shit and that happens and you know what i have never Receive. Nah, to be fair, I've received more vitriol uh, via the World Cup shit. You know, whatever you make any goddamn opinions about, you know, soccer. Uh, everyone has some goddamn shit to say. But I haven't received this much vitriol from a YouTube video since uh, since the World Cup. And that video was the biggest Golden Knights Game 7 review. And granted... Uh, some of those folks who actually watch through that video and, and have things to say, kudos to you, have fun, do what you want. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, I don't give a flying fuck what you people think. <clears throat> like, the rea- the brutal, harsh reality of sports is, and you being a sports fan, is the fact that you have to be a part of that team. You gotta endure with the team that you're going to be with, um, and, and, and recognizing that you can't win every game, not every game's go your way, and the, the process of growth, right, and that, that's what you kind of have to accept as a fan, and kind of have to understand as a fan, um, but if you have other opposing fans, of course, they're going to make your life miserable, the, this is, the, such is the way of a sports life, man, and, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Like, I wouldn't have it any other way, and that, that's how sports should be. And my, my ultimate problem just becomes when uh, you got dumbasses just blatantly saying dumb shit. You just have to realize, like, I didn't say this shit, but sure. Like, all right, but li- I, I'm, not, I'm not liable for liable. So, <coughs> oh, God. Oh, I feel like shit. I really feel like shit right there. But yeah, that that's my kind of sports complaint as of right now. Um, but yeah, the NHL playoffs are still, you know, Stanley Cup playoffs are still going on. I'm watching, you know, both the Eastern Conference games and only, I'm only watching the Stars and, and Blues. I honestly don't want to watch the Sharks and the Abs right now. I don't want to watch the Sharks. I fucking hate the Sharks. There's no fucking like. I, here's the thing. I always, I always say this. I hate opponents. I do. Um, their, their opponents. I hate. Their rivals. I hate. Um, their rivals. I hate. Respect. Their rivals. I just flat out, you know, respect. And, and there's no real animosity. San Jose is one of the former where I just do not like them. I don't really have a lot of respect for that team. And you know. Most of their fans can go fuck themselves. I'm not going to fucking pat them on the back. Oh, you guys did a great job beating us, and, you know, we choked our fucking game away. I'm not going to fucking give you, give you a fucking pat on the back. What's this shit with fucking sports fans wanting submission from everybody else? I'm like, listen, man, I'm not, like, I'll give you a perfect example. Russell Wilson. I sit here every fucking time whenever I talk about the Seattle Seahawks. I will defend Russell Wilson. I will flat out say some fucking outlandish shit like he is a top five quarterback in the league right now um i can argue top four i can absolutely argue top four but 
that's the opinion I hold, right? And, you know, I, I, I try to shine people in, in the light of Russell Wilson. And I understand some people won't, you know, won't, won't bite. They, they won't bite, you know, the, the fucking bait. You know, they won't talk about, you know, the points that I want to make. And that that's all fair. That's all fair fun and games. Because I recognize that. Everyone's opinion is different. Like, I, if you if you think Rodgers is is the best quarterback in the league, kudos to you, my friend. You do what you want, but you know I'll talk about Russell Wilson all day, every day. And the, this whole notion that if you agree with me, you're with me. If you disagree with me, you're my enemy, and I will kill you. I'm like, yeah, I mean, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. I mean, I. I I get frazzled all the time. If you see in my review videos, I get frazzled all the fucking time. I get fucking angsty. I get angry. I'm an emotional ass fan. Like I'm an emotional ass fan. I don't I don't deny that shit. I never I've never walked away from it. I vehemently tell people like I'm a passionate sports fan. I genuinely don't give a fuck if there's five people or fifteen thousand people watching a game. I'm still gonna be the same, you know fucking level of fan that I will be, you know, and, and, and so, I, I don't know, man, when I, whenever I just talk sports, I, I fucking get passionate, I, I get mad, I get fucking, you know, irrational, and, and that's what sports is, and so, when, when, I just get irritated when people try to rationalize this shit out, or try to have me kind of think in this fucking fixed box, and that was my whole gripe with the whole, uh, Game 7 issue, which... <laughs> Again, it's been it's been a couple of days since Game Seven, San Jose Sharks versus Vegas Golden Knights, and you know what the reality is? Um, yeah, Vegas blew a three nothing lead, four goals in four minutes and four seconds. Can't make that shit up, and they blew it in overtime. All right, I have said that so many times uh, through the video that I posted, but again, people won't listen, people don't need to listen, and that's fine, because at the end of the day, just like a slut, I only, I'm only racking up body counts, so, hey, thanks for the view, you fucking scrum diddly umptious bitches, Jesus, dude, okay, there are some fucking psychopaths out here, you know, the, the fucking sign clearly says 45, Yet you're going 55 like a fucking maniac, like on this ramp, and, and, and it's just it's just one of those things. Like, all right, dude, I, I get it. You got places to be. I got places to be too. But driving's also about safety. It's all about risk, uh, minimizing risks, you know, on the road. Yet here we are. Yet here we are, just in this fucking life and. Just driving around and trying not to get killed. Fucking Christ, dude. But there you have it, folks. That's that's kind of my rant about hockey right now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to. You know, it's funny. Uh, <clears throat> so I have the podcast, and I remember I said, "Oh man, I'm definitely you know gonna have a web episode on Wednesday uh, after Game Seven after the series is over. Hopefully, we go into Round Two. I'm not gonna lie, I was so depressed after game seven, and, and, and this was like, this was a whole new level of fucking depression um, that I haven't felt in a while <laughs> from a sports team. You blow a 3-1 series lead, you blow a 3 nothing lead uh, with seven minutes left to go on the clock in the third period, you blow it in overtime, and it, it, it speaks volumes about the fragility of the, of the mental game for the Vegas Golden Knights, and, and I was so bummed out, I just couldn't do anything, I will admit to that, I couldn't do anything, I was barely posting videos, I, I couldn't fucking think straight, to be honest, I, I really d didn't want to think straight, I hated it, I hated everything about um, Game 7, uh, from a fan's perspective, and again, I'm not, I'm not blaming, um, officiating at, the, at this point, even though they apologize, all that shit, but it was, it was, it's been a, it's been a bummer. That's all I'm trying to say. It's been a bummer, but slowly but surely, kids, we are we are chipping away at, at the hockey hockey mode. We are now 
fully engaged in soccer mode, as I like to call. Arsenal still has three matches left in the Premier League. Uh, 35 matches done and set. Uh, you got 30, you got 38 in the calendar year or in the season. So, Prem, we are we are just heating up. Yeah, the Premier League race is kind of crazy, you know. And I should I should have all this fucking rant shit up up and going, but yeah, um, Premier League is fantastic right now, and. You know, cruise, cruise, I get to talk about whatever the fuck. But I, I, I feel like I want to talk about sports today. And, and, and the Premier League, I'm telling you, if, if, you're, from, if you're from America and you, you don't like soccer, right? You think soccer is the fucking dumbest European sport, all this shit. Listen, man, Premier League is, is I'll tell you what, it is probably the closest thing to parody you'll see. When you watch soccer, that I, I will guarantee you that shit. When you watch soccer, football, you try to get into, um, you know, which which European leagues you want to watch, which clubs, you know, are, are the best to watch and all this shit. A lot of people will say Spain, a lot of people will say Italy, and some people will say Germany. I always say the Premier League because, yes. There's always the idea of the top six. You know, you, you get in the top four spot, you go into the, the competition in Europe called the Champions League. Uh, I believe five and six is Europa League based on the seedings of that year. And because that top six position, those top six positions are so coveted, there's, there's this race all throughout the season. And... Really, the, the craziest thing is, yeah, there, there has been some level of dominance by certain teams, by certain clubs, because of financial reasons. And, yeah, clubs like Manchester City, Manchester United, Liverpool, uh, Chelsea, all get to kind of experience this, this kind of... Uh, excess of spending, right? To, to, to fight for... A dominance in, in, in throughout the year. And so you would think that there's a lot of, you know, upsets and shit. And sometimes there are. But the, the fun part about the Premier League is any given Sunday, any given match day, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, wherever the fuck they have football kickoff, any, any club can win. Any club can win. And yes, there are some times where, oh, the 20th placed uh, team is going to go against the top of the league team, which generally, yeah, it doesn't bode well, but sometimes magical things can happen, and that that's honestly some of the best aspects of the Premier League, and that's why I encourage people, you know, if they, they want to get into soccer, you know, should watch the Premier League, it is, it is catnip, it is the best of the best, uh, yeah, but yeah, Premier League, there's a lot of shit going down right now. Football in general, upsets left and right. Uh, so I, I would, I would also say this too: if you if you haven't if you don't watch soccer but you want to get into it, watch European soccer, watch English football, and once you pick a club, prepare to be depressed as all hell. Because what what football has taught me is obviously sports monogamy: never cheering for another club, just one team kind of mentality, and just failure, utter failure year in, year out, my soccer team is Arsenal football team, Arsenal football club, we're by far the greatest team the world has ever seen, Arsenal, Arsenal FC, yeah, that that's the club I cheer for, but, you know, it, it, it's... Arsenal has been relatively disappointing these last few years, so I have I have been well prepared for failure. <laughs> so I I don't know I don't know about you other sports fans out there, unless you're a fucking like Patriots fan and shit like you just you just get to win every fucking year. Winning is so fucking easy. Like yeah, get fucked. We can't all be fucking Patriots fans. Some of us have to fucking lose. 
And my, why did my voice crack? Because I have to cheer for some fucking miserable ass teams, and that's part of that's part of life. That's part of sports life. That is absolutely part of sports life, and got to just kind of accept it, right? Just got, just got to kind of accept the fact that, hey, man, sometimes you're gonna cheer for a franchise that consistently loses, right? And, and you can't always have a winning franchise. It just, it's rare. I, I, I can't. It's hard for me to tell people, like, explain how hard winning actually is in in a sport like football. Now, yeah, let's let's get to let's get to some football talk too. Yeah, I mean, the NFL football, not soccer, is by far one of the few leagues in the United States <clears throat> in, in in terms of major sports that also has parity. Obviously, hockey. I mean, I don't even want to get into that shit because, yeah, I, hockey, it, it, it's anyone's game. Any season, anyone's game. Because let me let me quote you this shit. For the first time, this season, this postseason marks the first time ever in NHL history that all four division winners have lost to wildcard teams. That's right. That's how much fucking parity there is in the NHL, okay? Like, no matter how well you do in the regular season, that doesn't mean shit shit compared to the postseason, all right? Playoff hockey is different. It's a different beast. And, <coughs> you know, whether whether you um, like the fact that the Patriots have dominance or not, the reality also, too, is every season in the playoffs, there's almost always a different team in the playoffs. And that, for me, speaks to the volume of parity within the league because, yeah, the, the, the football season is a 16-game uh, season, what, only only four or five months at most, at most. And within that short time, every team has an opportunity to make it into the playoffs and by virtue, have an opportunity to get to the Super Bowl and to win it. And I'm, I'm telling you, man, when, when you get to see shit like that, it's cool, there's parity, it's, it's so much battleground for every fucking team, but yeah, there are times where you cheer for a squad that just, that just never fucking wins, and sometimes you're a fucking Patriots fan, and you can win everything, okay, that, that's, that's just, that's, a, that's just how shit works, and that's why we got shit like the draft, right, that's why we got shit like the draft, so play, so teams can start, you know, building up a team, um, from the ground up, build the foundation to create hopefully a dynasty that's exactly what every fucking team tries to do except that tom brady has you know written the rewritten the rules uh you know becoming thanos in the process you know all six fucking rings i am the goat I'm like yep yes you are i i've said this so many fucking times about tom brady i'm, I'm going on every fucking um tangents possible right now but the the reality of tom brady folks. I said this before Super Bowl 53. I will say this again. Tom Brady is the greatest of all time. Okay. I don't know how many fucking times I have to argue with this with people. Some fucking numb nut out there is still probably brooding over the fact that Tom Brady has lost three Super Bowls. Yes. Granted, he did lose those three Super Bowls. He did lose to Eli twice. He lost to Big Dick Nick, who caps off to Big Dick Nick. But, yeah, you just, you just don't, how, how do you question that dude's fucking, his work ethic, his, his mentality, his drive, everything about Tom Brady just speaks greatness. It speaks the guy who wants to elevate himself and the game to a new level, right? He didn't do anything revolutionary, so he sounded like a fucking fanboy. Shut the fuck up. Right, I know what the fuck I'm talking about. <clears throat> when you when you watch Tom Brady play, this is a man who is defying logic. This is a man who is defying time. Right? This is a man who has who has culminated his identity through experience, hardships, and and, and just every fucking thing possible as an athlete you can face. And for this guy to come out as now, seriously, he, he is, to me, the greatest of all time. Yes, there, there are more talented quarterbacks than Tom Brady, uh, historically, yes, absolutely. 
But if you include every aspect of what you want in a player, you know, the mental game, the physical game, the, the, the leadership qualities, um, you know, and let's not forget the ring count. I know people hate the talk of ring counts. Uh, the ring, rings don't fucking matter, bro. Randy Moss is in the Hall of Fame. I'm not talking about Hall of Fame. I'm talking about greatness, right? That shit, greatness can be measured in terms of how many rings you got, but Tom Brady really does exemplify what it means to be the greatest. And I don't care. Like I like I genuinely don't care anymore like how much I praise Tom Brady. Like I'm a Seahawks fan. I'm a diehard Seahawks fan. Everyone knows this. Like who the fuck is watching the draft, you know, tweeting every fucking time the Seahawks do something. This fucking guy right here. Okay. I have been very adamant about my Seahawks fandom. I I I will tell you right now. I'm I'm a fucking 12 till I die. And yes, I still remember Super Bowl 49. I watched that entire fucking Super Bowl. And the funny thing is, yes, I, I did I did pick that the Seahawks to be my team after Super Bowl 49. But despite everything um, the Seahawks have, you know, with the, with the Patriots, their history uh, with the Patriots as of the last, what, 10 years. <coughs> I still respect Tom Brady. There, there is no other quarterback like, of course, Russell Wilson. I love my boy Russell, but my God, man, Tom Brady is truly, truly the greatest, truly the greatest. I, I, I can't, I can't believe I have, to, I have to argue with people on this shit still. Like, I still can't believe him. Like, I, like, really, I, I gotta really debate with you people that Tom Brady is the goat. Like, really, I'm getting sick of this shit, man. Like, when, when somebody has to sit there with me and say, oh, Tom Brady isn't the best, man. Look at Patrick Mahomes. He beat the touchdown record. Tom Brady couldn't throw 50 touchdowns in the fucking season. He's late. <coughs> that's adorable. Regular season shit, that's adorable. You know, my buddy says this the best. He's a Denver Broncos fan, but he says this the best. You're either a Super Bowl winner or you're a draft winner. Or you're an in between, which pretty much equates to loser. Right? There's only two. There's only two winners in any given season in the NFL: a draft winner and a Super Bowl winner. Everybody else is a loser. And I, I love that. I love that mentality. It's because yes, because unless you get the number one overall draft pick and you you choose that wisely and you make moves to guarantee that you'll be in a viable spot for a championship. Yeah, you're either a winner, a winner, or a loser. Two winners, 30 losers. And so that's why, man. I mean, you gotta you gotta go to the draft and and, and try to build up. And I, I have been watching the draft the last two days. Been watching the draft. Been very curious about what my Seahawks were doing um, and continue to do. But. Here, here's the reality of the Seattle Seahawks situation that I, I fucking love. As a Seahawks fan, I love. We turned four picks to ten. And yes, we traded up twice. We traded up twice. Um, for a linebacker, Barton, in, in the third round, I believe. And we also took DK Metcalf in the second round, which I am so fucking excited for. I cannot wait to see DK play. Um, but it, it's, it's kind of crazy because, yeah, it, it's... Every team is now in this mode of, all right, how do we build this team? How do we you know, set up for training camp? And I am so excited to see how the Seattle Seahawks will fare in in this rebuild. Like, yeah, you, you've sent away Frank Clark. Now we got Collier. Uh, LJ. Is it LJ Collier? Yep. LJ Collier. We got Marquise Blair. Uh, Cody Barton. DK Metcalf. And the alarm shit's going off. Ah! I'm not even going past 50, but I'm super excited. I, I would love to see what the Seattle Seahawks do, um, and come preseason time, and okay, guess who else is going to be coming? Yeah, I, I can't wait, man. Uh, the NFL season looks so exciting. We're, we're only, I'm telling you, man, I mean, Russell signed that new contract. Yeah, Frank is gone. Well, 
I think we're going to sign Bobby to a new contract. Um, and, and, and for me, it's always this. As long as you can keep Bobby Wagner and Russell Wilson intact, and also go a step further, keep Michael Dixon. Because Michael Dixon is the punter goat, obviously. We, 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 love, we love our punters. But man, we, we finished the Russell Wilson deal. We're getting a lot of great draft picks. We got, what, four or five draft picks remaining today, last day of the draft, <clears throat> rounds four, five, and six, if I'm not mistaken, right? Four, five, six, seven. Um, but no, is it five, six, seven? It doesn't matter. What, what matters is the Seattle Seahawks are doing some exciting stuff. I am genuinely excited to see what we do. And you know what? You know what the whole thing with NFL draft is? And, and call me a sucker. Call me a sucker for this shit. But anytime I get to watch, and as a Seahawks fan, I love doing this. The Seattle Seahawks will always post like the call reaction video with um, you know the, the picks. That, that Seattle makes, and it's always the reaction of John Schneider, or, you know, call them first, and then Pete on the phone congratulating the cat that they picked. And DK Metcalf's was it, it was it was so beautiful. I I I couldn't help myself. I, I teared up a little bit. The guy was supposed to, and there's a lot of people saying DK is going to be a bust. He can only he can only run straight. He's not that great. I'll tell you what, Pete. He does. He does a great reclamation job, man, and and he has, he has been able to, you know, bring the best of guys, and I think we're gonna see the best of DK Metcalf, <clears throat> and injury issues, all that shit. The reality is, yeah, we got Tyler Lockett, David Moore, but no, no more Doug Baldwin yet. Doug Baldwin may not be playing in the near future, so getting DK with with the pick, like number sixty, some something I remember like 67 or something to get him in, in to me at, at a bargain price is going to be fantastic um we didn't reach for DK I think DK is going to be a fantastic addition I think having a lot of these cats right now I think the whole Cody Barton thing for me was kind of a question mark um but I'm, I'm going to give my own draft analysis. And this is here's the thing. When I say analysis, it's all based on feelings. And, and, and I, I pretty much have flat out said this. I am a sucker for those stories. And, you know, hearing guys like... D, I mean, DK's was seriously the best one. I Like, you, you can't top DK's. I, unless you go back a couple years and see the Jermaine Effetti reaction video, which I shit talk Jermaine Effetti all the time. I, I get infuriated when we talk about our O-line and, and Jermaine Effetti's kind of saloon door behavior. But I get excited. The dra draft day, draft days are, are as, as a fan for me, I get excited for the kids. I get excited for the guys who could potentially make a great career for themselves. And obviously, Seattle fans, we've seen draft picks turn out really well. We've seen, come on, man, Bruce Irvin, Earl Thomas III, um, fucking... Bobby Wagner, Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor, Russell Wilson, all these guys that we've picked that have become immense success. That like that's what I genuinely want to see from every draft pick that we pick. Obviously, it's not always gonna happen. That that's kind of the reality of sports that we we talked about. We can't always fucking win, but draft draft time is always an exciting time for me. I get to be a little more optimistic about football, whereas other sports is kind of in plateau or just sharp decline of depression because it's we're either knocked out or, 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 or in the process of getting knocked out like the Golden Knights and they got their fucking teeth, teeth kicked in. But draft day is exciting. Draft days are exciting. Uh, Seattle Seahawks doing some fun shit. Uh, I really do want to talk about the other NFL teams out there with how, how they've been manipulating um, them themselves manipulating themselves that's a weird way to phrase it but no it's some some teams i've been making some very curious moves uh I'll, I'll say one thing before i head out because i am right here at the gym boys and girls but let me tell you this one time 
I don't know what the fuck the New York Giants are doing. Like, I just don't. I don't know what the fuck the New York Giants are doing. I don't know what the fuck the Raiders are doing, to be honest. But those two organizations look like a fucking mess. They look like an absolute goddamn mess. Like, I, I genuinely don't understand those picks that those two teams made, you know, in, in the last two days of the draft. Like, that first first round was, was laughable for the Raiders. Um... That running back is nice, but he's not a first rounder. Like I, I, I've said that. I, I think that running back is going to be really solid for the Raiders, but not a first round pick based on. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not a draft expert. I don't watch. I don't claim to be a college football expert, but based on organizational need and 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 the culture that they've culminated in that locker room right now for the Raiders, not the best picks. Uh, as for the Giants, what the fuck is? What the fuck is Gettleman doing? I, I don't think he has a plan. Daniel Jones has a number six overall pick. I don't, I don't fucking know, man. But hey, NFL draft, all this shit going on, NHL playoffs, NBA playoffs, but that's neither here nor there. But there is a game seven today. But we are here at the gym, boys and girls. I'll probably post another cruise peruse in a day or two. God, I got to like shit real bad. So boys and girls. Follow me at the Sky Lounge and all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily content.